Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. Brandon again. In today's video, we're going to be talking about this half rack that I built using the Rep PR 5000 V2, which I've recently reviewed and I'll link in the description box below, which might be not only the best half rack ever built, but the best rack you could get for your home gym. Now, speaking of built, this video is sponsored by Built Bars. I mentioned them a couple times now on the channel. They've been a great friend to me in sponsoring a lot of my videos. They have really good tasting protein bars, good macros, good ingredients, lots of different flavors to choose from, all of which are surprisingly good. So if you wanna go ahead, you can check out and get an 18 flavor variety pack using the link in the description box below for like 30 bucks. Or if you have a flavor you know you like for sure, you can get 20% off anything you order on the site. So big thanks to them for sponsoring this particular build in this video. And we'll get into why this rack could potentially be the best that you can get. And I'm not just saying that because I built it. I really think it offers some really good things. A few trade-offs, of course, so let's get into it. So first things first, why a half rack? And for the most part, I wouldn't typically recommend them, but knowing people in home gyms with limited space, usually they can't fit a full six post rack. Now the trade-off to that is usually a six post rack offers more versatility. There's a lot of things you can utilize that for, from adding a bunch of accessories and getting a bunch of add-ons and really kind of blinging it out. The problem is not everyone has that kind of space. And for the most part, that trade-off of less floor space equals less usability, which isn't actually the case with this particular half rack. I think you can actually do anything and everything you could do in a six post rack, but all in a much more friendly format. So let's go through everything that you can do in this rack. So let's talk about what I think is maybe one of the best features of this setup, and that is the lap pull and low pulley options that it comes with that you can integrate right into the rack without taking up a ton of floor space. I say that because if you're in a home gym, floor space is of the premium, and you probably can't get a dedicated unit, which many of us are forced to do. Maybe we already have a rack and it doesn't have a good pull down option. For example, my Rogue Monster one, the pull down slinger on there is not good. So we look at standalone units. And one of the most popular ones out there, for example, is the Titan Fitness Selectorized model, which retails for 1300 bucks and also takes up a footprint of about 57 inches deep by about 41 inches wide, which is almost identical to what this footprint is. So you get the same footprint and a lot of the same functionality. Now, it's not a one for one trade off necessarily, but there's some benefits to having this model. Number one, it's integrated into a rack, which means there's a lot of other options, which I'll show you in this video. This one is also a plate loaded one, so you can have a lot more room for expansion. You don't have a single stack you're working off of where you might be limited to some weight. And the nice thing is here with this setup with the half rack, because there's integrated plate storage already, it's as simple as just moving the weight literally a foot onto the weight horn. So it's not like a dedicated lap pull down that's maybe weight loaded where you have to go to a weight tree or another rack. Everything is right here, right for you. And again, with this tubing that you have, which is three by three with one inch attachments, you can get some leg rollers here and basically just use that as a way to weigh yourself down for your lap pull downs. And because there's holes all on the upright, you could really adjust these for any height that you need. So if you need it higher or lower, whatever the case may be, and you can just use your standard bench for a seat. The nice thing too with this is obviously you now have these leg rollers and I find I actually use these for things like split squats and having my feet up. So there's a lot more versatility with this versus a standard lap pull down where those things are pretty much fixed in place and you don't have a lot of the adjustability or the versatility that those could potentially bring. Now you also have the low pulley here, which is nice because not all standalone lap pull downs have this. Some just have the high pull, but having the low pull here is really nice. It's really smooth like the other one before. You can switch out the attachments as needed. It has a foot plate that's adjustable as well. So you really get some good benefit down here. Now you can also get really creative with this if you'd like, again, because of the way that this thing is set up. So what I mean by this is even though Rep Fitness sells a belt squat attachment, I think you can actually get away with using the low pulley if you want. I've set up my spotter arms down here you could set up blocks, plates, whatever you want. In fact, if there was an attachment that added on feet, I think that would be even more ideal. But you can simply come down here with your belt squat belt, come in, attach to the belt squat or the low pulley. I've set up some actual band pegs here for handles. I'm gonna get close to like as I can to kind of emulate as most of a vertical path in that cable as I can. And now I'm just gonna simply squat. Now, obviously what you're seeing here isn't ideal depth. You'd probably wanna get a little bit deeper. So you'd probably have to build a higher platform or put some more plates under here. But I also like to see, as I mentioned, some potential steps or feet plates to be added, even potentially up here on this bracing deck, which I'm going to just balance here. But in this way, you get a much more vertical cable pull and you can get much more depth as you can see here. 
And again, this is something that's already all built into the system. So pretty versatile in that regard as well. Now, as is standard, benching is not a problem in here. I just put the ISO arms up. You can set the safeties to whatever height you need. And again, you can bench very safely within this half rack. Now, again, even though you can bench in this rack, no problems, if you have the jammer arms, one of the nice things you can actually do is use them as a monolift attachment. So you set up wherever you want, and you simply swing the bench out where you need to be, unrack, the arms drop down, do your pressing movements, and then simply rack the bar again. So again, just a nice added feature of having this thing set up. Now, one of the downfalls of this particular setup is where the rear stabilizer is for that lap pull down, it kind of gets in the way of how far you can push a bench back. And that's gonna come into play when you're doing incline press. Again, luckily, if you have the jammer arms, this is where those monoliths types come into play. You can put the bar up, set it up, pull it out, get it in a good position. And now you're able to do incline press, no problem for the most part. Now, if you're looking to do things like military press within this, that's going to be more difficult. One of the things I found though, however, is my Rogue bench, which is an adjustable bench also, fits in a lot deeper than this because it doesn't have the same stand-up stand that this Rep AB5200 has. Squatting is also not a problem here. I'm just about six foot four. I don't have any problems running into the jammer arms, although you could put the actual J cups on the jammers if you wanted to. Also where the brace is for the lat pull down is far enough back that you can still get into a very good position here and unrack and then simply take a step back. And now you're now squatting obviously in this half rack. You may or may not be able to hit depth, but there's spotter arms. And again, you can adjust those as necessary. There's also a pretty amount of endless ideas you can come up with the jammer arms and using the handles themselves. So like for instance, right now, I have bands attached to the actual barbell pegs and going back to the plate storage. And I'm able to basically emulate a standing chest press here. You could obviously alter these to have different angles if you wanted to work your shoulders or different areas of your chest as well, as well as some other pretty unique things. So one of the things you may have noticed that's different than the six post version I had before is I lost my globe pull-up bar, but that's not a problem. I can simply just put the jammer arms up, put the handles on, and I now have basically a multi-grip pull-up bar, a couple different places to grip, a couple different heights. I can also adjust the jammer arms if I wanted to raise this or lower this based off my own height. But again, being mostly six foot four, I can't even reach the tallest handles until I get on my tiptoes, and then I can then do some pretty good pull-ups where I'm actually getting a better range of motion than I was able to get previously with just the normal pull-up bar here. So you can even lower these jammer arms low enough down to the ground to the point where you're doing things like deadlifts. A couple different grip options here. You can do things like rows. So really the possibilities are endless. So there you go. That's really what I consider probably the best rack that a lot of people can get given that it's giving you all this versatility of squatting, benching, deadlifting, lat pulls, low rows, jammer arms, belt squats, all in a very small footprint. Now, to be honest, even though I think this is a great setup and it's very versatile, it's probably still not my ideal setup. At the end of the day, I do still like training in a full-on power cage. And obviously a lot of these things you can do with a cage as well, but this offers it in a very nice package and footprint. However, that being said, even though this doesn't take up a lot of floor space, one of the things that it's going to do on the other end of the spectrum is take up a lot of your money. So this is not a cheap setup as is, not counting the 700 pounds of weights that are on here for the rack itself, all the attachments, you're probably looking at two grand before shipping. And that starts to add up as you get maybe some of the nicer finishes if you go with the rep options, which is probably the best way to do it because that's the one that I'm showing on this particular one. And I'll link some of the pieces in the description box below. But if you're short on space, but you want high versatility, this could potentially be a great option as it affords you all the ability to do everything you can with a rack, as well as a couple machines, a lap pull down, all in the amount of space that maybe a dedicated lap pull would take up. Let me know what you think in the comment section below or any questions you have on the setup. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.